Good morning. In a comment exchange I had with Skidrow Radio yesterday, I happened to mention in passing the Dunning-Kruger effect. And uh, I've been thinking about it since, and I think it's quite an interesting phenomenon, really, which I just think is worth discussing a wee bit. So if you're not familiar with it, I'll just outline it a little bit, and then I'm just going to um, read something from a, a, a website I've been looking at about it. Uh, see what you think, really. The uh, Dunning-Kruger effect is a, a, an effect in psychology that was uh, kind of written about in 1999 by Dunning and Kruger, uh, in which they identified that uh, it's, to, it's to do with knowledge and learning and competence and self-assessment. That's the idea of it. And But the question being, you know, how do people self-assess? How do people, uh, when people evaluate their own performance at a particular task, a learning task, a knowledge-gathering task, um, how accurate are those self-assessments? And is there a relationship between a person's ability to self-assess and their actual knowledge? Yeah. And what they found with that is very interesting. What they found is that um, people who have a good grasp of a particular task, who have an actual real knowledge of a particular subject, tend to underestimate their, uh, their possession of that knowledge. You know, people in the top top echelons of any knowledge field or any performance field in fact physical performances as well as mental performances people at the top will tend to evaluate themselves lower people at the bottom will tend to on the other hand will tend to evaluate themselves higher so um, you know people that were at the bottom end of the scale will say that they will have the impression and convey this impression that they're they're much more knowledgeable much more uh, much higher performers than they actually are uh, and that's very stable. It's been tested over and over again. It's very interesting. Um, Charles Darwin actually mentioned something like it, and Bertrand Russell mentioned something like it in his writings. So it, it's an idea that's been around for a while, but as I said, Dunning and Kruger in the late 90s, they really put the empirical um, tin hat on it, so to speak, which is fascinating, really. Um, and one of the kind of um, allied things that you get with that is that um, whilst those at the top end of that can be relatively easily recalibrated, you know, if someone is almost at the top of their field but is constantly assessing themselves as if they're lower, they, they will learn from feedback. If they're given the results of their tests and said, look, you're in the top 10%, you're in the top 2%, these are your results, they will eventually... Um, learn to calibrate themselves to self-assess accurately. Whereas those at the bottom end take a much, much, much longer to do that. You know, if you're in the bottom 5%, the bottom 2%, no matter how many times people tell you that, look, this is your actual score, they will keep overestimating their, their knowledge, their, their performance in a particular task. And you kind of find that in education. I mean, obviously, I haven't done any formal studies for that, but it's, it's anecdotally very... Um, very common in education, which is where I work, that, that, that students who are really um, proficient at what they're doing, quick learners, they score high in their tests, they do tend to undervalue themselves. They do tend to, when, when you ask them, what do you think you got in that test, they will give themselves a lower mark than they actually got. But if you give them feedback, they'll eventually be able to assess themselves you know, which, which, uh, in ways that correspond to their actual performance. Whereas underperforming students tend to find it much, much, much more difficult to do that. They'll overestimate their capacities first, and then no matter how much feedback you give them, for a long time they'll still keep overestimating their performance. Um, and I say that's, that's in quite a wide range of tasks. So that's all very interesting. Anyway, I was lo just looking at, at this stuff for other reasons, actually, it's something else I'm working on right now. But um, it's, a, it's a forum post, but it's a really good forum post on overclockers. Um, and I'll put the link in there. And it's this chap who's talking about this, and he says the, uh, he gives a set of bullet points about Dunning-Kruger effect. Um, and it, it's, coming, it's coming from the literature, he's not just making stuff up, and it's, it is fully um, referenced and cited. Anyway, uh, okay, so let's just go through with this. And he gives us, as, as, as I say, a series of points for uh, aspects of Dunning-Kruger effect. The first one he says is skill boundary transgression. The individual is seeking to operate as an authority or qualified individual in a field beyond their personal level of academic and professional qualification. Now, this isn't just a, clay, a, a kind of elitist claim for qualification. It's just about knowledge, really. He used the word qualification, but he could have said knowledge. Um, 
So that's very common in Dunning-Kruger Dun effects. People are operating well outside of their established um, independently verified knowledge field. Secondly, self-identified authority. This is what you get something else you get in people who are affected by the Dunning-Kruger effect. Self-identified authority. The individual identifies themselves as sufficiently competent to comment authoritatively on the subject. So even though no established authority, and I don't mean that in a divine sense, obviously, but no established authority is telling the person that they're competent, they will self-assess themselves as competent. And again, you see that quite a lot. Uh, thirdly, unrecognised competence. Again, this is something a claim an individual will make. Unrecognised competence. The individual's self-assessed competence is not recognised by those who are academically and professionally competent. So when those ideas that the person has are put into a given scrutiny by people who are um, knowledgeable in a particular field, that they'll be dismissed, but it doesn't seem to affect the person's security in their beliefs, in their beliefs in their own capacities. Uh, fourthly, false peers, the presence of false peers. The individual believes that the favourable commentary, favorable commentary um, sorry, I've lost my message. The individual believes that the favourable commentary of other unskilled and non-professional individuals indicates they themselves are sufficiently qualified. So when we don't know something very well, if we're un unskilled, we tend to take the opinions of other unskilled people very seriously, in a way that we wouldn't if we were genuinely skilled. You know, if I genuinely was a motor mechanic, I would take the advice of people who were not skilled engineers and skilled motor mechanics. I would take it with a pinch of salt. But if I was an overconfident, uh, unskilled motor mechanic... Uh, then I probably would take the recommendations of other unskilled motor mechanics as, as um, serious uh, kind of commentary. Uh, fifthly, scrutiny avoidance. The individual fails to submit their work for professional scrutiny, such as, for example, publication in relevant scholarly literature, but it could be other things too, for review by those genuinely qualified. And again, it doesn't mean genuinely qualified in any kind of elitist sense. Quali qualification emerges in all kinds of different places, not just in scholarly institutions like the one I work at. You know, it happens in industry, it happens in, in the field, doesn't it? Um, but there are genuinely qualified people in all kinds of areas, aren't there? And uh, people who are subject to Dunning-Kruger effect tend to not submit their work for that kind of scrutiny. They avoid that kind of thing. Pioneer complex is another one. The individual self-identifies as a pioneer, uncovering previously unknown or unrecognised facts. So even though a, a, a topic, and maybe been discussed millions of times, a, a, an engineering feat may have been tried millions of times and not succeeded, or whatever, you know, any kind of knowledge gathering or use process... Um, Individuals who are done in Kruger tend to see themselves as pioneers, see themselves as being amongst the first, coming forward with new ideas, even though other people were recognising those ideas as pre-existing and they'll not be ignored. Okay, next one, conspiracy claims. The individual explains opposition by qualified professionals as a coordinated attempt to suppress truth in order to defend the existing scholarly consensus. You see that a lot, and this next guy on here on uh, Overclockers is talking about it in online forums, and you do get a lot in online forums that any kind of um, claim for actual knowledge is often dismissed as a kind of conspiracy by the establishment of of the you know the elite professionals, the elite scholars, those kind of things. Um, so conspiracy claims are very common in, in Dunning Kruger, and finally allocentric claims of bias. The individual explains the difference between their views and those of qualified professionals as a result of inherent bias on the part of the professionals. Accusations of bias are directed at anyone other than themselves and they claim objectivity. So that, again, that's very, very common um, for people who are uh, prey to the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's a fascinating idea. Um, it's obviously one that's important in education. It's one that's really, really uh, difficult to shift because of its inherent qualities. 
you know, if you are uh, unskilled, if you're uh, lacking knowledge in a certain field, you don't recognize your lacking knowledge, you don't recognize your own unskilled behaviors, and you reject any kinds of observation like the observation of Dunning Kruger effect itself as allocentric bias so, or conspiracy effect. So um, it's very recalcitrant, it's very um, difficult to shift. But it is, it, is, it is useful. I mean, I've certainly found this useful for myself um, because I, I feel myself being prey to it quite a lot. I often get strong feelings of certainty about things of which I know on a kind of objective level I am unskilled. You know, I don't have a degree in... I've got a PhD, but it's, it, it's a, just because it's a doctorate in philosophy doesn't mean to say I know, awful lot, know an awful lot about philosophy. I know an awful lot about a very specific field. But I don't know an awful lot about a lot of other things. But but you, you you can get that feeling of knowledge, can't you? You can get that feeling of certainty. And it manifests itself as a sense of obviousness, as a sense of um, certainty and truth. And um, So, you know, so I, do, I do feel that in myself quite a lot. And I have to be careful with that. Um, I've not always succeed in being careful, but I do try to be careful and recognise that I might be just dunning Kruger. You know, I might just be dunning Kruger in... And um, and ignoring other things, so I think it's always good for us. A little bit of a um, little bit of uh, what's the word? Not exactly modesty. Uh, yeah, a bit of humility at times. I think is good. Anyway, I'll put the link to this uh, this list because it's quite interesting, and um, I'll be interested to see what you think. <laughs>